Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing a discovery of yet another very, very massive black hole, but this time using an extremely interesting technique. A technique that's never actually been used before for this particular purpose. But before we talk about the actual discovery and how all of this was found, let's briefly discuss some of the record holders for the most massive black holes discovered and known to date. Now a few years ago I've actually made a video about one of these record holders, and it's a black hole known as TOM618. It's located in a galaxy that you see right here, that potentially looks something like this if you were to come close to it, and is about 18.2 billion light years away from planet Earth, and potentially contains up to 40 billion solar masses, depending on what scientists you ask. Originally it was actually believed to be about 66 billion solar masses, but this value has been recalculated to be a little bit smaller. Nevertheless, at this particular mass, it's almost at the limit of how big we think black holes can get. And even though it's so far away, it's visible as this bright quasar that you see right here, containing a luminosity of about 140 trillion suns. But a few years ago, a lot of recalculations and a lot of new discoveries led to two more supermassive or technically ultramassive black holes. Black holes that potentially could be completely unexplainable using modern physics. We have this object about 2.6 billion light years away from us, potentially containing something that's even more massive, maybe up to 52 billion solar masses in total mass, and then we have another object in the middle of the Phoenix Cluster, with this particular black hole being even more ridiculous, with the current estimate being up to 100 billion solar masses, and that's actually the double of what we think is even possible. And so how exactly this black hole can exist currently cannot be explained. But just like with previous black hole discoveries, it's really always about the way that it's all measured, Sometimes the measurements are just slightly incorrect, based on the observations that are maybe slightly outdated. For example, in many cases, the observations are based on some kind of an emission coming from the black hole itself, where the flares produced by the black hole are then used to try to estimate the mass of the accretion disk and estimate the mass of the black hole, but that's not always correct, and thus leads to miscalculations later on. But then there is this unusual object. This is known as the Abel 1201 BCG. Bright Cluster Galaxy. It's roughly around 2.7 billion light years away from planet Earth, but in this case this very bright galaxy also seems to act as a gravitational lens. Or basically it produces an Einstein ring, and it's actually sort of visible if you look at it really close. It basically sort of resembles an eye with an eyebrow. And as you might know from previous videos, this can only be produced by a very massive object in the middle, usually a really massive galaxy with a lot of dark matter, that's able to produce these effects that can then be used to determine the total mass. But completely by accident, the scientists studying this particular object discovered something else within it. They actually discovered another tiny arc. Or when analyzing this lensing effect, they discovered that something in here was not really adding up if it was just caused by the galaxy and nothing else. Something else really massive was at the center, creating additional shapes. Now the original larger arc was discovered approximately two decades ago, back in 2003. But the smaller arc was discovered back in 2017 using additional observations, and it wasn't really clear what was causing it, until the scientists decided to work this out by creating various computer simulations and by trying to recreate this from scratch by using a hypothetical scenario where there were different objects in the middle of this central galaxy. Basically they tried to see if there's maybe a black hole that's really massive that's maybe forming this. So they started to modify various simulations based on the total mass of the black hole, and in the process they started to discover that this arc would actually change in shape if the black hole was of certain mass. Eventually they discovered that one sort of a black hole was producing exactly what they were observing. That black hole would have to be approximately 33.2 billion solar masses. Although it doesn't have to be a black hole, it just has to be something really really massive and really compact right at the center of this galaxy and that most likely is a black hole. There's really no other way to explain this. And so after hundreds of thousands of different simulations, they discovered that the mass has to be 32.8 billion solar masses, making this one of the top 10 most massive black holes ever found. With the size of the event horizon being very similar to TON618 at approximately 1300 astronomical units, way way past the orbit of Pluto and nearly 10 times as far away as the Voyager probes and also almost at that absolute limit of what the scientists believe supermassive black holes should be, which is actually about 50 billion solar masses. But I guess more intriguingly, even today there's really no explanation for how such giants can exist, and why so many of these giants have already been discovered in really early universe, meaning that these black holes can form really quickly, 
or more importantly, why so many of them have been discovered pretty much all over the place, and how these ultra-massive objects can actually even appear. At the moment the mechanism is really unclear. As a matter of fact, some of these black holes are so ridiculously massive that the scientists even had to propose a completely new term from them. Some of them are known as slabs, stupendously large black holes. And this black hole is almost at that limit. And although this particular black hole doesn't qualify as a slab, there's actually a very high chance that using this technique, the scientists might now start discovering even more of these objects with even higher masses and thus create even more mysteries when it comes to their origin. But in this case, because of the overall accuracy of this technique, even though it's based on computer simulations, it does mean that the scientists might have actually created a very accurate way to confirm masses of various black holes and might actually lead to more discoveries coming from a lot of other gravitational lenses. Quite a lot of these lenses have been discovered in the last 10 years or so, and many of them do contain unusual smurfs or unusual patches that are somewhat difficult to explain unless there is something really massive in the center. And that's obviously because in order to even produce this, you do need to have a really bright object behind and a really massive object right in front of it, creating the lens itself. And the other reason why this technique is really exciting is because it allows us to measure black holes that would be otherwise quite invisible. Previously, all of the massive black holes have only been measured when they actually emit a lot of different frequencies by producing astrophysical jets. With only one supermassive black hole, the one in the middle of the Milky Way galaxy, detected and measured by looking at the orbits of various very close stars, as you see in this beautiful 20 year long time lapse that technically resulted in a Nobel Prize a few years ago. But other galaxies and other supermassive black holes generally cannot be seen this way. It's extremely difficult to detect these stars, and so the black hole has to be active in order to determine its mass. But this provides us with a completely new technique where the black hole doesn't actually have to be active and just has to be massive enough to produce at least some kind of a shape inside the gravitational lens, with the overall calculations also potentially being very accurate. But obviously it does require a gravitational lens and a perfect alignment between two galaxies in order to be able to calculate all of this. And so at least for now, a pretty cool detection, a pretty cool discovery, and something that we might discuss in future videos if the scientists discover more of these unusual, very giant black holes hiding inside gravitational lenses. Until then, check out some of the previous videos on similar topics in the description below. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt with a very large black hole in the center in the description below. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.